Dobra wieczora z Chernivsiv. Greetings from Chernivsi. And under some of my recent videos, there were comments about doing a little bit more content on business here in both Ukraine and in other countries in the region. So today's video, I'm going to explain to you how you can pay 5% taxes legally here in Ukraine. Now this is not legal advice, it's not tax advice. You do need a lawyer and or professional tax consultant. I actually help my clients with that. So if you are interested in going deeper into the very brief outline I'm going to give you today as to what a FOP is, yes that is the name in Ukrainian, it's a Fizichna Osoba Pidbri Emnist in Ukrainian, then down below in the description is both my email address and you should consider booking a consulting call where we'll dive deep into creating the dream lifestyle for you here in the eastern part of Europe, in New Europe as I'm referring to it nowadays. And I'll include both things to do with business, visas, all the logistics, setting up yourself to 5x your lifestyle and maybe also meet the lovely lady of your dreams. So anyways, let's get into today's Video Poyekale. Sar experience. So when Ukrainians translate it into English, they refer to it as a private entrepreneur. I think in the Anglosphere we would probably be more likely to call it being a sole trader. Basically you can register a FOP FOP in about two to seven days, so quite quick, and you do not actually need to be a resident in Ukraine. You will need to have a mailing address. And basically to get into the, the taxes that you will have to pay, what people pay if they have a FOP, you have two choices. You can either pay a profit tax or a revenue tax. Now the profit tax, obviously that's profit, you deduct your expenses from your revenues, depending on what you're allowed to deduct, and then you will pay 18% on the profit. However, you can elect to have a revenue tax, and that is a 5% revenue tax so you don't deduct anything but then the tax rate is five percent plus you must pay your social contributions that will work out probably around 40 us dollars per month so about 37 euros per month uh, so over the year that's going to be what it's going to be 480 dollars so i guess that's just whatever some somewhere in the ballpark of 450 euros there is actually a limit of seven million hryvna per annum that you can have as revenue and pay this 5% in addition to your social contributions. If you go over 7 million hryvna, then you will have to pay 18% uh, on the amount above as long as you have taken some procedural steps beforehand uh, to allow the government know that you're going to exceed the limit. And you're probably wondering if you don't have a calculator or the app, the currency exchange app, the Forex app on your, on your phone or in front of you. 7 million hryvna, Ukrainian hryvna, how much is that in dollars or in euros? It is about 190,000 US dollars or 180,000 euros approximately. It is very late September 2023 when I'm saying this, so go and check obviously the current exchange rate. And that works out about 16,000 US dollars per month in revenue or 15,000 euros per month approximately per you know as revenue that then you could pay this low tax rate on and obviously this is attractive to entrepreneurs who don't have very many expenses like in the IT sector where basically they're not able to deduct very much they can't deduct their time they maybe have low overheads because everything's up on the cloud then obviously this could be very attractive and normally it has been IT entrepreneurs or people working online or something but very low deductible expenses who take advantage of this Ukrainian option to pay 5% tax plus your social security contribution don't forget that as well so that's an overview of what an FOP or a FOP is in Ukraine and how private entrepreneurs or sole traders they pay more or less 5% of their revenues in tax and that's it. Salud in Kishinao. So here I've transported myself 
by road to Chisinau, the capital of Moldova. Actually, there's a wedding going on behind me. And yes, it is actually the end of September and it's 30 degrees Celsius. It is absolutely crazy, this Indian summer we're having in the region. And I'm here because this is where my clients come to nowadays. Uh, we don't do the in-person experience in Ukraine, although, as you can tell by the fact that I made this video, I do have guys who contact me who are interested in what's going on in Ukraine, how to travel to Ukraine, how to contribute, how to volunteer and help Ukraine and obviously this very difficult period of time. But that's a small number, understandably, who actually want to live at the moment in Ukraine with the war and obviously the risk of Russian rocket attacks, uh, which is not a pleasant experience. I can attest to that personally. I think at this stage it's probably around 15 months that I've been bringing clients to some of the alternatives in the region. So that would be here in Moldova, in crazy Chisinau. The nightlife has been fantastic. It's all been open air. Love it for free. It's kind of like free boiler rooms, if you know the electronic music setup that you see quite often online. And you know, it's a special brand, but basically you have that kind of scene with electronic music here in the center of Chisinau. And I would say that Moldova is probably the closest as an experience as you're gonna to get to Ukraine at the moment in the sense that culturally it feels pretty similar. Uh, obviously people here all speak Romanian since that's the national language, also Russian is widely spoken. And actually Ukrainian is also spoken a bit. I've met girls here when I've been out partying who actually speak fluent Ukrainian. There's actually a lot, uh, well, a significant number that also speak Ukrainian. But basically, like I brought a client here and he described it a little bit like being in Odessa without the seaside which is kind of half of Odessa, <laughs> half the reason to be Odessa is the seaside, but you get my drift, it's pretty similar-ish culture. There's even parts of Odessa Oblast that are very similar uh, to southern Moldova. So yeah, it's a pretty cool place to hang out. Difference between the summer and the winter. It is a city of about 650,000 people, so maybe a bit quiet to live all year round, but definitely in the summer, it's been absolutely superb. Oh, it is crazy hot here. I feel like jumping in that fountain. <laughs> the other places I've been bringing clients are also a little bit similar to Ukraine in the sense that there's a massive Ukrainian diaspora and that of course is in Warsaw, Poland. You got the cute Ukrainians there. Also got a large diaspora of Belarusians who've come in the last couple of years. And of course, in addition to the beautiful Belarusians, you have the pretty Poles. So definitely for the dating scene, Warsaw is quite attractive. You got a lot of foreign guys going there at the moment like guys from North America and Western Europe relocating to Warsaw. Economy is on the up and it has been basically for 15 years in Poland. It's definitely a city and a country that's developing quite rapidly and the standard of living that you can get there is definitely improving year on year. It's quite impressive when you look at the development that I've seen in Poland in the last decade. The other two places are Riga up in Latvia, the capital there. Riga is a city on the Baltic Sea, so we don't really have options on the Black Sea so much nowadays uh, with Ukraine, with the recent Ukrainian war, but we do have the Baltic Sea. And it is a city a bit similar in size to here, but it is the biggest city in that kind of southern Baltic region with Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. And if leggy blondes are your thing as a guy, then Latvians are some of the tallest people in the world and some of the, some of the blondest people in the world. So that's kind of the demographic you're gonna find there. So for a certain type of gentleman, gentlemen prefer blondes, right? Isn't that how the saying goes? Well, that's what you'll find in Riga. And we have Almaty, the big apple of Kazakhstan. That is the fourth city I've been bringing clients. Very different atmosphere. Obviously it's just off the steps of Central Asia. Phenomenal city. And you get weather like this in Almaty, the city is so green. And then you have the mountains nearby, you have lakes, canyons. It's really, really amazing in terms of its natural beauty. And as you'd imagine, it is majority Asian. It is 85% Asian in Almaty or in Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan, and about 15% European. But people are super friendly, nightlife is good. And it has, I think it's a very unique offering because most of that region is a very conservative, um, very traditional uh, in that sense in Central Asia, majority Muslim uh, region. And it tends to be more secular in Kazakhstan. And to be frank, it's a lot more fun for the partying there. So had 
some good experiences with my clients and ate a lot of horse meat as well. Not sure that's for everybody. So one of the things as I come up here to the Arc de Triomphe, I'll give you a look at that, because as I always point out, so one of the big things I've been working on with my clients briefly is social circle, because you don't want to be building moments when you come here. And like we're discussing something that's obviously business related today, and that is something that you get a lot from hanging out with like-minded guys, right? You're gonna be thinking about the same issues and how to resolve them. And one of the things is obviously business. Uh, you can meet a business partner who's gonna make millions with you and you're gonna make millions with them. Also, you need camaraderie. You don't wanna be hanging out with no buddies, you know, for the long term. It's, it's great going on with these amazing dates. Like a lot of guys do this, like swiping on Tinder or they meet women the kind of more old fashioned way through socializing, and they go on one-to-one -one dates. But that's a little bit dull, and not really, it's pretty predictable, right? If you go on a one-to-one -one date, you know, most guys bring the woman to a restaurant, and uh, yeah, it's fine and everything, but those get monotonous after a while, if you're living in this region, no matter how beautiful the women are, it's just the reality. What is a lot more exciting, and especially if you're going, by the way, on a short trip, like you come on a trip to Chisinau on your own, you can try and do it yourself, of course, or you go to, uh, to Warsaw, which is very popular, right? But what happens to most guys is they either hang out with other foreigners who are kind of like tourists or they're digital nomads. I have much to offer the local ladies really in the long term because they're probably not even planning to stay that long. And they'll end up typically in a touristic bar or something like that in the city center, probably drinking a meter high beer with some other people who think in the same way. And that ain't where the local hotties are hanging out because they're not interested in that kind of scene. And contrast that with rocking up with a cool crew, having a tables, tables already at the best establishments in the city that probably most of the foreigners don't even know about uh, because that's local knowledge. And hanging out with a great bunch of lads and some local hotties and just having an amazing experience, right? Think, con contrast that with the typical tourist experience. It's like night and day. So you might meet your next business partner I've had that happen with clients before that they, you know, saw great opportunities with other guys in the crew. Might meet the love of your life. No guarantee of that, of course. But yeah, it will definitely be a lot of fun as an experience. And that's what I do in person with my clients in those cities. It's really a combination of social circle with nightlife. I think that's just the most fun and best way to meet women. It's more organic. It feels more natural. It's like swiping right, swiping right, some running these apps. It's kind of like low quality at the end of the day. Most online dating nowadays has become very low quality. And I see there's a move back, especially amongst people who have lots of options. So for women, that's beautiful women, to meeting guys in person, uh, more than say was the case maybe five years ago. At least that's my impression. And that is particularly true in this region. So if that sounds interesting to you, because I'm also rolling out the Zara Experience 2.0, which will only be open to alumni. So guys have come and lived the Zara Experience with me. It is by application only because I don't take everybody because it involves social circle. So you need to be a good fit for the experience. And down below is the application form. Now, as I will say at the end of these videos, if you're new here to the channel, definitely go and check out some other playlists I've put together of other videos here on YouTube. Make sure that you've gone and checked those out first because that will give you an idea about the Zara experience, give you a bit of a flavor for the cities. So I have my first playlist, which is the cities where I live the Zara experience with my clients. Some previous vlogs as well from Times Your. Second playlist is my set of tutorials about how to date the nines and tens, the uber beautiful, the Olympian level beauty that you find here in Eastern Europe. So I stand out again into this incredible sunlight. <laughs> it's like crazy how hot it is today. So that's the second playlist. Basically all you need to know on that subject. And if you're really interested in diving deeper into the mindset here in what I'm dubbing New Europe, I have another video about that as well pretty recently. It is, I think, a better description than saying Eastern Europe, because for a lot of people, Eastern Europe is like Prague <laughs> or it's Moscow. So, you know, there's obviously a lot of area in between those two <laughs> points on the map. And there's a lot of diversity there. So really, New Europe is the, the sp sweet spot where you want to be 
heading to, in my opinion, if you are a single Western guy who is of high value and looking for more abundance in life, better value for money and better dating options and just getting away from all the kind of like madness, uh, the wokeism and all that kind of uh, malarkey <laughs> that you often see in the West, those shenanigans, um, the culture wars, all that kind of stuff. It's less of an issue here. They do have their own kind of culture wars, but you're going to be oblivious to it if you live here as a foreigner 99% of the time. So that you have the third playlist that is my vodka, vodka series, near longer format. Uh, videos is probably over 50 hours accounted there. So if you really want to dive deep, go through the playlist. I don't suggest you watch it all in one sitting. You won't get up for a few days, but do that. And then down below, you have the application form. And as I tend to finish up these videos, in the words of a famous ice hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, with the name Gretzky, you know where I'm going. A man of Ukrainian, Polish, and Belarusian origins, according to his biography. He said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So, down below, strike the puck, let's go for it. And it might be you, with me, and my crew, 5xing your lifestyle and taking the first step towards that on a weekend on the Czar Experience. So, dopo bacina, laura vedere, usaro buona, till next time. Czar Experience.